So, Maria, what are you doing on November 6th? I don't know. Smashing the patriarchy? Get the fucker! <laughs> November 6th! Midterm elections! He's the hair's serious. gotta come down He's for this serious. shit. Ah, that's beautiful. Don't forget to vote. It's literally the most important vote you'll cast in your lifetime. We may not have another election if things stay the same. Truth. Truth. So, Hashtag facts. Please go out there and vote November 6th. Just so we have, you know, something called checks and balances again. That would be nice. A functioning democracy. Yeah, that would be really nice. That would be really nice. So, you know. Please. Go out and vote. Go out and vote. Save this fucking country. <laughs> uh, I'm going to drink. Welcome to Regarding, a talk show where two POC recommending theater in NYC. My name is Ray Yamanoshi. I'm a playwright. My name is Maria Paz Allegre. I'm an artist and a theater critic. We got two great shows coming at you this month. Good Grief at the Vineyard Theater. Eve Song at the Public Theater. And an interview with Hansel Jong. She's got a new show coming up at the Public called Wild Goose Dream. So stick around. We're going full Asian this episode. Full fucking yes. Asian. Japanese, you got it. Korean, hell yes. Filipino, mabuhay. My people. Good Grief is at the Vineyard Theater. It's written by Ngozi Anyanu and directed by Awoye Tempo. A young medical student navigates the planes of memory and time as she struggles to cope with the loss of her beloved partner in beautiful, dazzling, and yes, good grief. So you remember Ngozi if you're a fan of the show from one of our earlier episodes from last season. Yes, here's a link to that wonderful, wonderful episode. Yeah, you should definitely check it out if you haven't already. I got to say first off the bat because we know her as a playwright, but she's also an actor and I was just like, oh my gosh, girl, it's so brave to actually star in your own play. So. You know, there's, it could be either twice the accolades or twice the, you know, twice the criticism. But she, she crushed it. She crushed it. She was such a great actress. And the play had, the play had so many different levels. Um, we called Literally? It, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it had, it had little levels. Do you want to talk about that? Uh, so the set is uh, built where there's one really high level and then like a little, uh, sort of ground level, but it's sort of on a little bit of a raised platform, mm -hmm. and all the playing mm -hmm. spaces are utilized really well. Shout out to Woye, uh, and they all sort of slide, and there's panels, um, and each panel doesn't necessarily represent a new memory, but they all take place in different scenes, mm -hmm. and it's just really, really well done. And the lighting is beautiful, and it gives it this sort of almost cosmic galactic feel of yeah. like, you know, existing in this wider space. Absolutely, and the panels too. Sometimes they they had light with them, and sometimes light shone through. And so, yeah, you know, sometimes they're all on at the same time, and sometimes you just need to focus on one thing. So mm -hmm. it just it was like its own character, yeah, in a way, like the whole set. The yeah. lighting it design. was blocked beautifully. So something that's kind of trickly done is for me is is magical realism and and memory plays. Like it's really it's really easy to do it poorly, just because it could be too kitschy or too too melodramatic, but I didn't feel that at all. Like mm -hmm. I felt like like she just she like seamlessly like navigated through through memories, through present time. And sometimes it was it was really witty, it was a wrestling match, and other times it was just like it, it just it broke your heart. A person dealing with grief can always be a bit saccharine or melodramatic when that becomes a whole show. But yeah. this was so nuanced mm -hmm. and so specific in its various scenes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it really made uh, the mundane seem extraordinary. I was actually recommending this play to somebody today, and I had a little bit of trouble like describing it. And I said, "Well, uh, there's a character, the main character. She's she's mourning the loss of someone." And they're like, "Oh, so it's a sad play?" I was like, no, 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 it's, it's not, not sad. That's it's the not. Thing. That's the thing yeah. about Good Grief. It's not sad. It's it's brilliant. Like mm -hmm. it's dazzling. And that's it's, true. I didn't yeah. even think about that because I because like, how do you yeah sad. how do you describe that? But it's not like it's just. It's moving and it's touching, and that's what I loved about it. Like it's good grief. Like it's oh, good grief. Like there's so many. I mean, layers. There's yeah. layers. There's yeah. levels of that. Yeah. So go check it out. You killed it, and guys, you killed it. Eve Song is at the Public Theater. It's written by Patricia Ione Lloyd and directed by Joe Body. The picture perfect neutrality of a suburban black family begins to literally crack and shatter under the increasing awareness that they must show how their black lives matter. 
So after the show, it was, uh, you know, one of those things where, oof. Yeah. Yeah, it just sort of stays with you. Mm. Um, so it's a really moving piece. It's a very powerful piece about black womanhood. Mm. Um, and uh, the in self- all its forms. Yes, in all its forms. Mm-hmm. In, I think mostly how to maintain oneself as a black woman in America. I really liked uh, how it was embodied in Lauren and Deborah, and then the character of Upendo. Uh, it's 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 a suburban family and uh, a successful upper class suburban family, and so there's this very strong facade and image that the mother wants the children, herself and the children, to maintain, and then Upendo upends, you know, this what, what's happening right now. Um, uh, yeah, I saw it. I see what you did there. Uh, I see it. Um, and so she, yeah, she opens it. And so there's this, you know, lesbian, powerful, multicolored hair, Black Lives Matter protester, and how, like, her influence with Lauren, the queer daughter, you know, really shakes the play. And I was, I agree with you as far as the, the, black, the black lives of these women. I loved that each character, the mother, the daughter, Upenda, ooh, even the son, had their own completely unique and strong journey and perspective that's not always done in theater, that it's usually one storyline and so, like, you know, supporting actors, but this was, this was really strong storylines with each main mm-hmm. character actor. Right, and I think the thing that's kind of cool about this play is that I saw it sort of where it was going because mm-hmm. The play told you, it sort of drew the, the rails as you were going, you know, you saw the crack in the wall and how everything little started. Little crack. Right, little crack that start to, the, you know, the set start to crumble around them, I guess, mm-hmm. um, and their lives. So you knew that the end isn't going to be good. You knew that it wasn't going to be a happy ending for these people, yet even knowing that it's going to come, I think that's what makes it even scarier. Mm. Because Ooh. what is that thing? What is that thing that's going to hit? Yeah, what's going to make this right. crack shatter? Exactly. Yeah. And something I also that was very unique was this uh, were these three women. Uh, there were three uh, three black women who uh, would move things. They'd come on stage and be shadows. Sometimes they'd be silhouettes. Sometimes they'd be a Greek chorus. Sometimes they'd be a monologue. Uh, and when when they did finally speak, it was you know, talk about shattering. You know, sometimes when they had these historical silhouettes, it was very evocative of Carol Walker's uh, silhouette series, um, the the black slave women and, and, and what they endure through, uh, through shadow. One of my favorite moments in the play is with Lauren and Upendo, mm. um, because they end up, you know, dating, or whatever dating is in this movie, <laughs> right? They're together for a little bit. You know, um, chilling, yeah, hanging chillin', out, seeing hangin what's like, yeah. yeah. Uh, but sort of this, Upendo is this big activist, in quotes, mm-hmm. uh, and Lauren sort of calls her out on her activism because she doesn't believe that it's genuine or it's mm-hmm. really uh, working. And it's just really interesting to see these two ideologies clash, especially knowing that Lauren's mother is a very much a woman about respectability politics and always being better than everyone else, being better mm-hmm. dressed, better acted, mm-hmm. um, and never showing your weak side. Mm-hmm. And Upendo is all about upending that. Yeah. Um, and having that clash. But they're both about the image. Yeah. Both of them are very much about, image focused. Yeah. It's so funny, one being mm-hmm. the, uh, the conventional image and the other one being the unconventional image mm-hmm. like they both are obsessed with having that image be shown mm-hmm. great show go check it out check it out it's so good and it's gonna but it's gonna leave you yeah. it's gonna it's it's something that's gonna stay with you and i think for a good reason today we got a playwright straight from the public who speaks to your soul south korea Hansel Jung. It gets better at times. <laughs> hey, Burn! That joke, that joke of the year. Welcome, welcome back to our show. Hansel welcome. Jung, we're so happy to have you on. Congratulations to you Thank on you. your show at the Public Theater. It's called Wild Goose Dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, and that also came from La Jolla, correct? Yes. California, La Jolla that Playhouse. Double premiere. Great, so tell us a little bit about that. Uh, Wild Goose Dreams is um, a play about uh, two people meeting on the internet, a North Korean defector and a Korean goose father. Do you know what a goose father is? 
explain. Gu's father is a Korean man who has sent his whole family, um, like wife and children, to another English-speaking country for their kids' education, stays in Korea, hmm. uh, earns money, and sends the whole um, send, sends money to his family mm -hmm. while living alone. So, in this play, a North Korean defector who has defected like five years ago so, um, goes online, meets this Goose father, and they sort of have an almost um, love story. Right. And, right. you know, they have a one night stand, and then stuff happens that makes the play As continue. they always Ooh. do. <laughs> As they always do. Uh, and Lee Silverman directs, correct? Lee Silverman directs, yes. Great. The, it's a cast of 10. It feels like a. Um, Lee always likes to say it's a two-hander inside a musical. Mm. So there's, Interesting. There's mm. a sound bite. What was the impetus for you to include like music and singing into the, your depiction of the internet? Mm -hmm. Because that's the thing with this play is that the internet is sort of like this ensemble of actors yes. that like sing. Yes, and they're singing in a cappella in right. binary codes. Right. That is right. what is yeah. happening. Um, so how did that sort of idea come about? You know, life is chaotic mm -hmm. and this is somewhere where we look for order and comfort. Mm. Mm. And so the idea was that when the internet happens, you somehow in your life get a sense of order. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. And um, when Paul Castles, the composer, and I first talked about like how, like, because all I gave him was like a bunch of binary codes and some words. Mm -hmm. And he was like, um, what's happening? <laughs> and so I was like, yeah. and then I explained what the feeling is. And he was like, and then what he brought back was a sampling of Gregorian chants. Mm. And so the music of it is very oh. um, uh, trying to find order because you know the internet at the core of it is just math. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, it's algorithms. Yeah. Incredibly right. structured Code. and yet Code. the wild west. Right. right. Yeah. Well, it's the wild west because humans keep accessing it and mm -hmm. giving different things and trying to talk through it and communicate through mm -hmm. it. And, there are many rules that are about humans that shift on the internet, but how it works is very ordered, and it's, um, I guess, a place where you go for refuge and comfort, in, in my play anyway. Mm -hmm. Your aesthetic has been described as magical realism or surrealism. Who um, did that? <laughs> People, Who the media. That? <laughs> well, no, that's what I wanted to know. Like, do you do you like that? Is that how you kind of identify some of your styles as a playwright, or do you like? Well, how do you feel? I feel like identity, identity in general, is about the person who needs that label. Mm -hmm. So, if someone needs a label to describe me, I mean, if an educator is like, let's look at magical realism playwrights and like mm -hmm. find some aspect of it inside my play. Fine, it's a magical realism play mm -hmm. for you in that moment. But I think I just go through it with. I mean, I like it when theater is needs to be theater, and uh, it, I I enjoy finding um, mus muscular metaphors mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, of how to uh, parse out the experience I'm going through, I suppose. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, I think like put I like animals. I have like animals in almost every single. <laughs> yes, there are <laughs> animals in this play as well. <laughs> There are animals in this play. I'm there not gonna animals, say. I'm not gonna say what kind of animals. And it's not geese. Yes, that's true. <laughs> that's true. It's animals. It's not Twist. geese. Yeah. So the, the geese is a red herring. <laughs> this play started as a. Was it a commission or was it like a prompt? Right. Um, yeah, it was a. It was a prompt from um, uh, the Royal Court. Mm -hmm. It's uh, the International Playwrights. Um, Here's their information. <laughs> if you're interested. Right. It's like magic. It just yeah. appeared. Yeah. So the royal court asked you to commi or commissioned you for. They it wasn't a commission. Prompt, it was, it was yeah. like a um, summer. It's like three weeks in the summer mm -hmm. where they have a bunch of playwrights from um, not the UK. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, I think, five of us. There was a woman from Argentina, from Ooh. South Africa, Germany, mm -hmm. uh, oh, and from Germany, and China, mm -hmm. and me. And and I gave them like some ideas and they were like, cool, 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 cool. Uh, but maybe do you want to write something set in Korea? Mm. And I was like, oh, what? Right, right, right. <laughs> and then they said, we have resources to translate it for you. Ah. But what happened, and it was like such a stroke of luck that um, the Korean translator that they had wasn't available. And so I was like, okay, I guess I'll just do it because there was a reading at right, the end right, of the right. three weeks. And as I did it, I was like, oh, this could actually really be a play. Wow. How did you it's like translating your own play? No. 
<laughs> no, what happens is I wrote it and right. then I try to translate it. And as you translate, you have to interrogate the meaning of each word. Right, mm-hmm. right, right. And so you start cutting and changing as you translate. Right. Right now, uh, my mom's coming to see um, the show in the, the first week of previews. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. My whole family's coming except my dad. And um, my mom doesn't speak English, but mm-hmm. it's the first play of, professional right, right. play of mine that she's seeing. Right. Mm-hmm. And it's set in Korea. Right, right. So I've been spending tech translating the play back to Korea. Oh my god. For her. Oh right, right, right. And it's like... Full circle. Yeah. yeah it's, oh my god. It's How such so a weird... I actually... I didn't, I didn't do nearly that much effort, but uh, my father doesn't speak uh, English that well. Uh-huh. And so like when I have readings and stuff, like I would have... To, I would go like scene by scene and I would like basically write the synopsis in my terrible Japanese and I would have to translate each scene and even that I was like oh. <laughs> but you know but like I, but yeah but like no, before the reading my dad real. like has this yeah. like cheat sheet and he'd be mm-hmm. like reading it you know and I'm like oh my god this is but you did the whole play right I'm doing it right now that's crazy. and it was really weird wow. where I was translating a scene and they were taking it Oof. on stage and right. I was like whoa this feels oh my really god that's and also so the much work way they did the yeah. set is also um, the entire Martinson mm. is um, surrounded, like all four sides, surrounded by um, Korean things. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's wow. just like a right. collage of, and, and you know, it's just sort of. I love it. It, it, it oh, reflects. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds immersive. Sounds amazing. Yeah. yeah, it reflects the schizophrenia of the play a little bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, great, great. To be translating in that space while they're speaking the language in English, it's like a. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, so because you're translating it, and you have you have a, a you have to have a good grasp of both how it sounds in English and in Korean. With regards to humor, have you have you found that to be like a hurdle translating Korean humor into into English or or vice versa? Like, is it is? Do you think it's very different? I think so. Um, I think I'm like in the fault lines of it. So I very often just don't understand mm. humor. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, you don't, you don't understand humor period or like American like humor? Like either. I think I have my own rhythms of what's funny and what's not. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's it's very, I think, I've been told that my sense of humor is weird. Okay. And From from Americans or from South Korean? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Cool. And so um, I will say something and people will laugh and I will not know why <laughs> <laughs> okay yeah 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 and i mean and it happens in both countries and in the writing of it i think i emulate the humor that i've heard so it's it's very uh, the humor that i employ i think are uh, of two varieties mm-hmm. one is dick jokes and two <laughs> is um just musical <laughs> Musical. Oh my God, it's so that musical. that's that sounds a lot like Tenacious D. Like if you know the band, that's basically I do. all they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's, yeah. No, those yeah. are dude dick jokes. That's mine a- are mine are uh, women dick jokes. There we go. So, yeah, they they have to be different. I'm so excited there we go. So way. you're like you're like the I don't, the female version <laughs> of Tenacious D. I don't know. Oh please don't say. Yeah, that. that sounds horrible. That's why I said it. I was like, no, redact yeah, it. As you were. Yeah, yeah. Like pull that, that back, reel that back, reel that back. <laughs> By the way, I love Tenacious D, but yeah, you know, yeah. I, feel, I get it, I get She's it. She's the female version of Hansel Jong. Thank you. That? There we go. Yeah. She, huh? she is in a league of her own, let's just put it that way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so if you could go back and give your younger self advice on on playwriting, on theater, on all of it, what would you say to yourself? Don't do it! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. Damn. That's Damn. wrong. That's a lie. No, I, I would never say that. I think... I'd say read more. Mm. I like reading a lot, but I think that's where I'm pulling from right now. Mm -hmm. Reading or experiencing the world, Mm -hmm. not actually writing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I I would like that. I think that's like the reserve I have to really pull on, like what I have felt in those years or Mm -hmm. what the the things that have impacted me and stayed and, and became a part of my own story memory are the things that are making the things I make now. Mm. And to have, I wish I had like a deeper reserve of that. Mm. So like the literature and the experiences have informed your art, so. Yeah, the, the liter- literary experiences for sure, but travel experiences, um, you know, to, to meet people deeper in a deep way, mm-hmm. or um, yeah, things that I just wrote off as like, ugh. Right, 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 right. Kid, yeah. Lean in. You heard it first, college kids. Lean right. in. Lean yeah. in. All right. 
So we're coming down to the tail end of our interview, mm -hmm. and you know we're a show that recommends theater. So if you don't mind, we would like you to recommend something for our audience. You can give it to any camera you want. The center sure. one is the medium shot. That one, the roaming one, is a close up. So whatever you want, give it to the people. What do you recommend, Hansel? I'm allowed to recommend like literally anything. On anything, this, right? you anything, you anything you want. Anything okay, you want. Okay, so last two weeks ago, I went to a roller derby. Oh shit! Bout yes. game. Bout. Mm -hmm. In New York, it's Gotham Girls. If you're in yes. New York, mm -hmm. go. <laughs> I took um, my girlfriend and, and my really close um, two gay male friends who expected it to be horrible. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you. It's so much fun. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. You have, like, there was this amazing Gotham woman girls. named Eva Hex. Or Eva Hex, we didn't really meet her because I was fanning out and felt shy. <laughs> Eva, or Eva Hex is literally Lord. our noun right now in our circle to be oh, like, shit. you know, Lee Silverman is the Eva Hex of directing. <laughs> so, yeah. if you Damn. want. Damn. That's high praise. It's, mm -hmm. yeah. Props. I mean, Not props to represent Eva You guys Hex. are like the Eva Hex of the interview. Uh, oh, what's hi. good? Yo, you we'll heard it here. It. We'll take it. Yeah. That's right. And my second recommendation is, um, this is a sort of studious real one. Yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. If you have time, resources, and you are in New York, go see Thunder Bodies oh, by Kate Tucker yes. at Soho Rep. I yeah. went to a preview last week. Word. It is, and, and she's a really good friend of mine. We went to school together. Yeah. I've she was in Mars Nova. I know Kate. Yeah, what's she, up, Kate? It, her yeah. brain is uh, so completely different from mine, but but it, I, it just her writing doesn't exist in the world right now mm -hmm. and it really needs to and uh, they open on Saturday so go see that yeah, the show <laughs> and if rep. it's closed already read it yeah word yeah they got the bookstore open so the bookshop yeah. I mean yeah. <laughs> yeah. alright okay. well thank you so much Hansel thank you so much for thank coming you. on thank you thank you so much cheers cheers Thank you so much, Crazy Cool Asian Hansel Jung, for coming on the show. That was such a dope interview. She's got her show, Wild Goose Dreams, at the public. It goes until December 16th, so make sure you go check that out. And for an extended interview, right here, you know what to do, right here, right here, right it's here. It's a dope interview, too. It's great. It's She's great. amazing. It's great. And like always, because we need to keep these lights on, please like and subscribe. Please. It feels so good. It's please. so important. And you want to see more of us. Come on. We're so cute. Come on. Hey, check hey. out our good hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, and if America's We're... still around for December, then we'll see you in December. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> vote. Vote. Seriously, though, vote.